Hey guys, welcome back to our Wyoming life. You caught me off guard here because we are continuing on with yesterday's video where we uh, got the heifers ready for breeding. Uh, we changed out tags. We put in our RFID or uh, EID tags, which is the electronic uh, identification tags. Um, we are now heading down, back down to our heifers, which we dropped off, if you remember, uh, yesterday in the one-legged windmill pasture. And I can tell you that uh, I'm a little bit caught off guard because our new bull just showed up. In fact, we're chasing him down the highway right now. That's him right up there in that truck. And we are going to be leading them down to the heifers. told you like yesterday this is a bull from the Duke Vader <laughs> line of bulls from uh, Magnet Ranch uh, up in uh, Broadus, Montana. Uh, this is the last year of their bull sale so we're actually uh, very proud very honored to be able to buy a bull from them. This is bull number 101 and here in just a minute we're going to be taking a look at some of his pedigree and what he is all about. So we're going to get down here and get him dropped off. We'll take a look at him, see what he looks like, and uh, then I gotta come back and pay for him. Now, they're not cheap. Uh, this one single bull cost us $4,000, and uh, we're gonna get him paid for, of course, today. We pay upon delivery, so we're gonna write a check for him, and then uh, we'll come back down uh, after he gets settled in a little bit, and take a look and see how he's working uh, with our heifers down here and talk a little bit about what he is and uh, how he's going to help us out on the ranch and about his future on the ranch and how he's going to uh, be one of our lead bulls hopefully for the next few years. So we've got a little bit of a trip down and uh, we'll get him dropped off. Another beautiful day in northeast Wyoming. We've got thunderstorms due in this afternoon. We had about a half an inch of rain overnight, which of course led to some, some puddles and uh, everything else, but uh, we'll take all the rain we can get. Hay season, as far as I know, is still on. So here, uh, coming up this week, we're gonna be getting some hay equipment ready, uh, getting it pulled out, finding out what we need to repair, and making sure that everything works. So that'll probably be uh, Thursday's video, this video kind of a, a bonus for you guys. Uh, for the week. So we're heading here into one of our hay fields and uh, I gotta tell you it's looking pretty dang good. and uh, swing by and take a look at him and then uh, I gotta head back to the house and write a check and then we'll come down and see how he's settling in with the girls. Now 
number 101, and we're going to call him LOL. So I think that's a good name for him. Of course, he's getting a bite to eat because uh, he's got a lot of work ahead of him. It's a carbo load. <laughs> All right, guys, it's now been a couple hours since we put old LOL out here with the rest of the uh, the heifers, and he's had a little bit of a chance to settle in. He's standing right back there looking at me. And we have our storm that I mentioned earlier, the thunderstorm. It's on the way also, so I figured I better get out here and get this part of the video done and wrapped up before the thunderstorm hits. And it's on the way. So LOL is out here with these heifers, for about 60 days. He's gonna hang out, he's gonna do his thing, and at the end of that 60 days, we'll actually roll all of these guys in with the cows that we're breeding also. The cows don't get bred for another month, and that's because we want the heifers to get bred first because they're gonna have more trouble calving, so it allows us to concentrate on them. Uh, they'll actually start calving uh, right about the beginning of March of next year. And the other reason is that uh, heifers tend to take longer to cycle back after they have their first calf. So we'll have a little bit of, of leeway there with those guys also. They're leaving, so we might as well jump in the gator and take a look at how LOL 101 ended up on the ranch. Every year we receive bull catalogs and we get a ton of them. Um, they look just like this one. This is the Magnum catalog that LOL came out of. So let's take a look and see what it looks like. So this, like I said, the 50th and final bull sale uh, for Magnum Ranch. And I did find out uh, today that unfortunately it sounds like they're not even gonna be a cow-calf operation, that uh, they're gonna end up leasing land and, and kind of getting out of the business altogether. So kind of a crappy deal if you ask me, but um, you know, that's kind of the way that a lot of these ranches are moving, um, and, and this is the end of it. Uh, there's John. Of course, uh, he passed away and uh, started uh, the whole process of, uh, his, his passing started the process of, of this becoming the last bull sale uh, that they had. So um, what we're looking at uh, when we go to buy a bull is performance information. Uh, some people call them EPDs. I don't remember what that stands for, but um, what we can do is we can look at um, the tracking that they do on the bulls throughout the number of years. Now these are all registered Angus bulls, so they know who moms and dads were and, and they're able to trace all that back. Um, the biggest thing that we're looking for is uh, birthing weights um, because we want calving ease. We want it to be the easiest calving that we can. So um, the birth weight of a bull actually influences the calving ease by about 65%. So if we go in here and we're going to find LOL, he's 101, can't be that hard to find, right? Got to be in here somewhere. 99. Where, oh, there he is. So as we look here, uh, here he is, 101. And his brand is 1601. That means he was born in 2021, actually. And there's his pedigree. And those are his mom and dad and grandma and grandpa. And here's the EPDs that we're looking at. Birth weight, 88. So that's good. 205 weight, that would be his weaning weight, was 610 pounds. And there's his date of birth, 41021. We also have other EPDs um, that are birth, 2.4, weaning, 53, milk, 31, and yearling weight, 93. So the nice thing about some of these catalogs is they actually have all this information in here for you. So you can take a look and see. Um, the EPD is expressed in pounds and is an indicator of an individual's contribution to his prodigy's weight at birth in comparison to breed average. Birth weight seems to affect calving ease of first calf heifers. So when it's time for us to buy a bull, that's kind of the, one of the first things we look at is that birth weight. We want a low birth weight so that the calves um, that the heifers are gonna have are easier born. The weaning weight also is pretty important right there. You can see his weaning weight, 610. That actually um, is, a, uh, um, is the actual weight that he weighed at weaning, uh, 205 days. So that tells us that hopefully his bulls or his calves will be somewhere around that same weight. Um, they can actually do an adjusted weaning weight, which gets into more math and stuff like that. But this is all very, very much a science. It's all very scientific. It's, most of it's probably over my head. 
but um, it is something that we want to look at. And really, like I said, the, the, the birth weight is what we look at uh, mostly to get us rolling. So that's how we choose a bull. And uh, of course they have all the, uh, the herd health programs, which are kind of nice that you can actually follow along with these and, and work on them yourself. Kind of a sad thing to see a legacy uh, going behind or going away like that. But uh, I guess having, a, having their bowl here on the ranch really does make a big difference for us anyway. And it allows us to, uh, to continue that legacy here, which makes me happy, especially considering that we're no longer selling anything at auction. So LOL's offspring and even Doof Vader, his offspring, uh, the, the bull that's going to be in with the, with the cows, they're staying on the ranch forever. The heifers will be rotated back in. Um, of course, we're going to have to find a different bull next year, but that's something we're going to deal with as we move along. But for right now, LOL seems to have found his place on the ranch. He seems pretty happy about it too. So we're gonna get out of here. We're gonna let him do his thing and we'll be checking back in with him over the next few days and making sure he's okay. Be sure to follow along, explore the ranch life and escape the ordinary. Quick little video today, but we did wanna show you guys our new bull. Um, obviously the, uh, the bank account's a little lighter because of it, but that's okay. Uh, this helps us extend the ranch on for another year, another two years actually. So very good job guys. Hopefully he does a good job. We'll see you next time right here on our Wyoming Life.